Johnson. This is Soul Food Ministry, and we are Southern Heights Baptist Church, 4001 South Anthony Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46806. Reverend Ovan Aiden is senior pastor. Sunday school, 9.30 a.m., morning worship, 10.50, evening worship, 6 p.m., prayer meeting, Wednesday, 11 a.m., and 7 p.m., Wednesday youth meeting, 7 p.m., for your prayer request, call 260-744-9307. I've got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Thank you for those songs this morning. Amen. Everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling. I remember when I spoke at the Effort Baptist Church in Liberia, West Africa in 1989. Boy, that was the first time I heard that song. I got a feeling. Everything is going to be all right. Be all right? Be all right. Be all right. I want to thank uh, Dolly and Nellie this morning Amen. for the music. I want to thank Reverend Hughes for playing for us on the instrument. Thank Reverend Howard for his ministry to us. Amen. I am just so glad to be here this morning. Thank you, Deacon Spicer, for that fervent prayer and Deacon Nelson for reading the Word of God. Hey, it's good to be in the Lord's house Amen. on the Lord's day. And uh, I want to tell you something this morning. Uh, God has spoken in his word. And he's spoken in his word. And in his word, he tells us that Jesus Christ is in charge. Amen. No matter what happens, Amen. our blessed Lord is sovereign. Amen. He reigns in heaven above and in the earth below. So no matter what the economy does, no matter who wins the vote, no matter how much trouble you sense going on in the world, Jesus is the sovereign Lord of the universe and he is in charge. 
And I am so glad this morning that he is in charge. Amen. He is in charge because, number one, he is said to be the image of the invisible God. Yes. And uh, he is in charge because he is, to be, he is said to be the creator of all living things. Nothing exists today but which Jesus himself did not create. Isn't that exciting? That means principalities and powers and angelic beings and evil and wicked spirits as Paul preached to the, to the Colossian church. You don't have to worry about demons. You don't have to worry about evil spirits. You don't have to worry about the deceased spirits of the ancestors because Jesus is in charge of it all. Amen. 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 He made peace through the blood of his cross. Calvary is there. He has reconciled this old wicked world to an omnipotent God. And why did he reconcile this wicked world to an omnipotent God? Well, you, read, you need to read Romans chapter 3, in which the apostle delineates 19 indictments against the human race. Now, we think we're good, do we not? And sure, praise God for being who we are. Amen. But uh, the human race has a terrible picture before God. We've all gone out of the way. Amen. There's none righteous, no, not one. With our wicked hands, we have used deceit and, and uh, deceit in terms of imagination and Amen. murder and violence that we see going on in our world today. You say, whence comes this? We are living in an enlightened age, are we not? But I want to tell you something. We still have a heart that is contrary to the will of God. So I invite your attention this morning as we look at the sufficiency of the Lord Jesus Christ back to the book of the Colossians chapter 1. And uh, let's notice in the text here who the Lord Jesus Christ really is. I feel confident that if we really knew who he is, we wouldn't have the worries and the frustration that characterizes us in today's world. Notice, if you will, Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. We are told, uh, and I'm reading from the New King James Version here. He is the image of the invisible God firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers. All things were created uh, through him and for him. My life is created through him, my life is created for him. I am to live it to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is before all things. We want to look at that this morning. He is before all things. And in him, all things consist. All things are held together. Every atom, every neutron, every proton is held in its circuit by Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. When you read this text, you cannot help but come away saying, Lord, I am fearfully and wondrously made. You created me. I am not a mistake. Right. I'm made in the image of an invisible God. And I thank you for what you have done. Since you know the stars by their name, amen? The hairs on your head, they're numbered. Yes, amen. yes they are. Uh, there's nothing that will come into your life today but that Jesus will not open the door for it to come. All right. So whatever happens, we can trust him. Amen? amen? Notice, if you will, verse 18 
He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He might be first in my life, in everything. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. With that in mind, I want you to bow with me this morning and let's pray and ask the Lord for his blessings upon us as we uh, allow the Holy Spirit of God to be our teacher today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your word this morning. Bless it to our hearts. Teach us, Lord, more of your ways. Let us know how precious we are in your sight. And let us know, Lord, that you are loving and kind and compassionate God. And help us to rest in your truth. We pray again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, the book of Colossians was written, obviously, to combat false theology that's running rampant all in our modern world as well. Uh, there are many gods, but only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, he is one. Deuteronomy 6, 4. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your might. We dealt with that last Sunday night. The triunity of the Godhead. God is one God, and yet God manifests himself in three personalities. The Bible teaches it. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Not the names, but the name. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They all do the same thing in the Godhead. They move around in the Godhead. And so we're not, that's not our focus here this morning. This morning it is the sovereign lordship of Jesus Christ. And I pray that each one of us will buy our hearts and acknowledge him as a supreme lord of the universe. Right. Contrary to some of the false statements that are made concerning Jesus Christ, and I even hate to repeat them, but they're out there, but they're wrong. Some saying that, yes, God created Jesus and then told Jesus to create everything. That's false. It's right out of the pits of hell. That is not according to the word of God. You take that position, then John 17, 24 would make no sense. For the Lord said in that verse, for you love me before the foundation of the world. The one thing that went on in eternity past, when God stepped out of space and said, uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before that happened, the Lord Jesus said, Father, you loved me before the foundation of the world. And of course, which means that the one thing that went on in eternity past, was love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He never was created. He could not have been created. Perish the thought that Jesus Christ was created. He always was God. He is God. He always will be God. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You see, and uh, which means basically that the Father and Son stood face to face in eternity past, co-equal in every sense of the word. And the Holy Spirit is the one who breathed upon uh, this earth, blew up on this earth, and he there is in creation as well. You go back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You see... And the Holy Spirit moved and brooded over the earth. 
So the Godhead is there. Jesus Christ is preeminent this morning. Amen. Now the first place that we see him being Lord in Colossians chapter 1 in verse 15 is said that he is the image of the invisible God. Amen. That's who Jesus is. The image of the invisible God. He is a replica of the invisible God. Wow. He is equal to and with the invisible God. He is the mighty God. Wow. And you see that in the Word of God in many, many places that He is there and He's equal in every way. Now, I hope you have your fingers uh, loose so that you can turn with me a little bit so that uh, I don't just have to remember everything. Go to Isaiah 48. That's in the Old Testament. I know some churches never quote from the Bible. And uh, they come to church with the Bible in their hand, but they don't use it. The Bible is lost in the church. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Yeah, lose the Bible in church. Isaiah talks about this, this great God of ours. And uh, we need to, 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 to go back over here and uh, find what the Word of God has to say about this God of ours. Uh, Go to Isaiah 44. I said 48, but go to Isaiah 44, would you please? And I want you to focus your eyes down up on uh, verse 6. Isaiah 44 and verse 6. Look at what it says. Thus saith the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, the king of Israel and his who? Redeemer. Redeemer the capital L-O-R-D the Lord of hosts. I am the what? First and I am the last and beside me there is no God. Say, so wait a minute. Is this just confusion here? Mm -hmm. Is he talking to himself? Yep. <clears throat> Thus saith Yahweh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this God who exists by his own power, who needs no help from you or me. <laughs> Amen. We see him revealed in Exodus 3.14 when Moses said to him, Lord, whom shall I say to them that has sent me to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Whom shall I say? Amen. And he said, uh, yes, I want you to just let them know. I am that I am. Just tell them that the great I am God Amen. sent me. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> Who is this great I am God? Well, you see him in the New Testament. All You can't read the Gospel of John without recognizing. Amen. Before Abraham was, John 8, 58. Before Abraham was, I, who, I, what? I am. I am. And in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Amen. This I am God. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. John 8, 12. He said, I am what? Don't you know that verse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, don't, you don't know that verse? <laughs> I'm just playing with you. 
I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. You, you, when you got Jesus, you got the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, when you have Jesus, you have the light of the world. John 14, 6, I am the way, thank you. I am the truth. I am the life. This great I am God has revealed himself in the New Testament as Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. The resurrection and the life, and that's critical to the text this morning from the book of Colossians chapter 1. For he is the head of the church. He is the firstborn from among the dead. We get down to that. When it says that he is the firstborn, it doesn't mean that God created uh, Jesus first. That's false theology. Amen. Jesus has a place of preeminence, of equality with God the Father in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Jesus Christ is our risen Lord, and I must accept him as such. But think about this. What happened to him on Calvary? They nailed him to an old rugged cross, did they not? They ran the spear in his side, did they not? And blood came out of his body, and you hear him on the cross saying, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Nobody took his life. He dismissed his life. He's the only man who's ever died that way. And listen, he's the only man who has ever died who resurrected himself Amen. from the grave. No man takes my life. John 10, 28. I have power to lay it down of myself. I have power to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my Father. He is the only one to voluntarily lay down his life, and he did it for you, and he did it for me, to pay for your sins and to pay for my sins. That's why he laid down his life on Calvary, and he laid it down because he said, I can take it up again. Jesus is the only one uh, who has been resurrected from among the dead. All of the others, they were not really resurrections as such. And yet the Bible does call, call them resurrection, you know. But they were brought back to life again only to die again. Yes. Think of poor little Lazarus. <laughs> been dead four days. Spirit dismissed from his body four days. And then Jesus walks up to the grave and says, uh, uh, well, uh, remove the stone. Oh, no, my master, please. He's thinking now, rigor mortis has already set in. This place will, feel, will smell terrible if you remove that stone. And Jesus said, take away the stone. He looked and he said, Father, thank you. You hear me all the time. Lazarus. Well, had he not said Lazarus, Abraham would have gotten up. Isaac and Jacob and all of the Old Testament saints would have, would have come out of the grave. It would have been a horrible time there. But he said, Lazarus, I only want you to come forth. And, and Lazarus got up. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Smelling like what? Smelling like a rose. Yes. <laughs> And Jesus said, loose him. Just, just, just take, the, take the straps off of his face and, and all of those, those uh, <laughs> all those, uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> uh, not, no, not vitamins, but uh, herbs. herbs, yes. All those herbs that you buried him with. Uh, take him out of that. Amen. And Lazarus went on back to the table, sit down and to eat. And wicked mankind said, uh-uh, you better kill Lazarus. We know he was dead. Take his life. Isn't that something? We talk about the wickedness of mankind. But I'm simply saying to us this morning that Jesus Christ is the only man who has died, 
went into the grave and then resurrected himself never again to die. Amen. Woo! <laughs> you all believe in shouting over here? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that, that's shouting territory. He'll never go back into the grave again. He is, a, he is alive from the tomb. And he looks at us in John 14 and he says, because I live, Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Because I am alive today, yes. <laughs> you will live also. I know I'm coming out of the grave. Amen. Yes. If the Lord tarries, amen, and the rapture doesn't come to take me out of here. Now, I'd love for that to happen, you know. Yes. Uh, like the New Testament saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. Yes. Maranatha, our Lord comes. Come right now. Yes, yes that's, what, that's where we live. That's what we say. Come on, Lord, and, and rapture me out of this body. But if he tarries and he allows the undertaker to take me under, amen? And they stand over the camp. Oh, 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 he was a good daddy. Oh, 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 oh. He was a good pastor. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we do some carrying on, don't we? Yeah, we do some, <laughs> some carrying on, you know, over the casket. <laughs> and I won't be able to get up and say, you shut up. <laughs> you know you didn't mean all of that. <laughs> but I'll be absent from the body and where? Present with the Lord, which is far, far better than anything that we have ever experienced in life. When you talk about Jesus Christ, you're talking about a master, a ruler, a Lord. And he said, I am the first and I am the last. Here I am, Jehovah God, and here's my Redeemer, yeah. Jesus Christ. That's all it's referring to. You read it also in Psalms 110 and verse 1 where the psalmist said in the Old Testament, my Lord said to my Lord. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> my Jehovah said to my Jehovah, sit down on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Yes. Peter quotes it on the book of, on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 36 <laughs> and, and, and 37 and 38 where he talks about the fact that God has made that same Jesus, yes. that same Jesus whom you crucified, you rammed the spear into his side. God has made that same Jesus both Lord and Christ. Amen. Yes. He is the head. Yes, he is. He's not one of them little demons. Not one of them little idols. When you talk about Jesus is the image of the invisible God. I love that term. The invisible God. See, you couldn't see God. No. See, if God walked into this room in all of his essence, you know what? We'd have a huge meltdown. Yes. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> we would self-destruct. And some of these people talking about, I saw God and God spoke to me and God shut. No, no, you didn't. No, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't tell that lie on God. No man has seen God in his essence at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has let him out. Yes. John 1, 18, you see. <laughs> Praise God. When he says, who is the image of the invisible God, yes. the firstborn from all of creation. Let me show you one other verse, coming back to Isaiah 44 and verse 6. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 1 in your Bible. Revelation chapter 1 and Sorry I didn't bring my King James text with me here this morning because I can find it quicker in that old King James. But we'll find it here. Revelation chapter 1. And notice verse 15. 
Let's pick it up at verse 15 and uh, go down from, uh, we're told here as he talks to the church uh, in Revelation, uh, let's come back before verse, uh, let's, let's come back to verse 6, Revelation 1 and start at verse 6 rather and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Look at verse 8. I am who? Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto the Laodiceans. You see, he is the first, and he is the last, and uh, let your eyes drop down on verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the, what? The first, the first and the last. So this first and the last God in Isaiah 44, 6 is said to be none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know him this morning? Yes. Is he your close friend? Is he your yes. close companion? Yes. Did you talk to him today already? Yes. Have you read from his word this morning? Yes. The sovereign word of God which he has left to guide and to direct his church. Yes, he's God. He's almighty. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. Now, what do we mean, firstborn of all creation? Let's go back over there because, you know, these cults, they take those terms and they, they make them mean what they want them to mean. Well, what do you mean, he is the firstborn of all creation? Uh, by him were all things created, uh, the firstborn of all creation. Does this mean that God created Jesus? That's what the cults teach. And then having created Jesus, God said, Jesus, you create the rest of the world. That's not it at all. In which way was Jesus the firstborn? Thank you, sister. There you go. Hey, you were listening. <laughs> yeah, you knew that perhaps already. But in Matthew 1, 25, she shall bring forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and they laid him in a manger. Mary had no children before Jesus was born. And I'm going to say this, I can say it, I think, over the pulpit. She had not become intimate with a man nope. before Jesus was born. Luke 1, 35. How can these things be? 
since I have never known a man, how can I be pregnant? I've never known a man. Well, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And perish the thought that the Holy Spirit of God had sex with Mary. That's not it at all. Him being God, the creator of the universe, placed in her womb. Amen. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus had no beginning. He did not begin in Bethlehem of Judea. He was always. And God placed him in the womb of Mary. And therefore, in order for him to identify with you and with me in my failures and in my shortcomings, Jesus Christ had to come down as a man. Where he became a total, as Dr. Whitcomb would say, a 100% man. And yet, 100% God. You know, down from his glory, ever living story, our God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. Born in a manger, to his own a stranger. What a story! What a story! The Son of God, walking among men, fully human, fully God. And he did that for 33 years. This is mystery of all mysteries. Paul talks about it in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Since you don't, you can't quote that, why don't you turn? <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 3 and notice verse 15 what it says. 1 Timothy 3 the Holy Scriptures well First uh, Timothy chapter 3 and verse uh, 15 I think you have Second Timothy look at First Timothy 3 15 but if I am delayed I write to you that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Now notice verse 16. And without controversy, I don't argue this statement, I don't debate this statement, I simply accept what God has said. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And notice what happened here. Great is the mystery of God. God was, what? Manifest in the flesh. God was whole, host, uh, referring to God, the omnipotent God, was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's shouting territory. Amen. <laughs> the invisible God was made manifest in the flesh in the form, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not an idol. He's not an image. He's not to be put on the shelf with Mohammed. He's not to be placed along beside Buddha. He's not to be placed beside Shinto. He's not to be placed among the, uh, beside the demons of our day. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. 
And when you place the demons up beside of the Lord Jesus Christ, it happened just like it did in the Old Testament when they brought Dagon into the temple and placed him by the Ark of the Covenant. What happened to Dagon the next day? <laughs> I think you read this in 1 Samuel chapter 5. The next day they came in and they're looking for Dagon standing erect. Dagon was flat on his face. You can't put Jesus Christ by the little Im <laughs> images that are running rampant in our world today. He's in a category all by himself. He's Lord and he's master. And I hope and I pray that we will submit our lives to him because of who he is. But uh, let's, let's go further here. I didn't get too far here. He's the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of all creation. By that meaning the son of Mary who never became intimate with the man. And yet God brought through Mary his holy son into earth, into this life. Firstborn of all creation. And by that being the firstborn of all creation, meaning that he has a place of preeminence over everything. Sinful human beings may not want to submit themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, but there will come a day when the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus, this Jesus, is Lord of all. Man, I hope you have already done that, that you bowed your head and your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ to acknowledge him as the Lord of your life and as a savior of your life. Look at verse 16, uh, Colossians chapter 1. For by him all things were created, and he's specific here, that are in heaven. Now who might that be? You have the angels, the seraphims, the cherubims, you have a guy named Lucifer. You have a guy named Michael, and Jesus Christ is not Michael. Amen. Let's dispel that fallacy. He is not the angel Michael. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And he is the creator of Michael, the archangel. <laughs> and... Uh, See, uh, Lucifer became Satan when he, when he saw the splendor of, of God. Man. And he covered it in his heart. I want that position. Yeah. No, that's right. I will ascend into the clouds. I will exalt myself above the stars. Man. I will be like the Most High God. You read about it in Isaiah 14, 12. I will, I will, I will do this, I will. And when Paul talks about where did sin come, it came as a result of pride. We have to watch our pride because it'll get next to us. It'll bloat us, and make us think that we're bigger than what we are. And that's what happened to the devil. And God says, I'll cast you out. I'll cast you down. No. <laughs> He's God alone. And he created everything for his glory. And uh, what he says in his word, that his word will not return void to him, but it will accomplish God's divine plan for our lives. You read about that in Isaiah 14 and in, uh, in Ezekiel 28 as well. You read about it in Revelation chapter 12, where the evil one is called by a number of names. But always uh, one who accuses others. Mm -hmm. 
When I read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and saw the number of times this word for devil appears there, diabolos, in relationship to young preachers. Man, preachers need to be careful. Amen. Need to be careful. Amen. Because pride can easily bloat us. Amen. Lord, help me to always recognize who you are and to know that you are great omnipotent God. Amen. He is our creator. Yes, and he brought things into existence that are in heaven, not including Christ, the angels, the cherubims, the seraphim, and many of them who rebelled against God in Revelation chapter 12. When he was ca cast out of heaven, he drew a third of the angels from heaven. Amen. A third followed him. Uh, that's something. Don't think that Satan is a little old pushover. He wasn't born yesterday. He's been around for a long time. Amen? Amen? <laughs> He's been around for a long time. But I don't fear him because I'm in submission to the will of God. As long as I walk in the will of God, as long as I'm in subjection to the Spirit of God, Satan can't touch me. I feel good about that. Create which was with things which were in heaven. Visible things in heaven. There are angelic beings all around us today. And nobody fool you. We're not here alone. Angelic beings all around. Visible, invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers, you read about them in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. <coughs> thrones and dominions and principalities and powers and wicked spirits in the heavenlies. Well, that's why we need to read the Word of God daily. Amen. That's why we need to pray. That's why we need to gather for worship. Because there's an unseen world out there that does not like Christian people. That world will do anything to pull us away from following the Lord Jesus Christ and serving Him. Amen. Ladies, He'll make you get up on, on, on Sunday morning and say, Ah, I didn't get my hair done. <laughs> Brothers, I didn't get my suit out of the cleaner, so, so I'm going to watch the football game today. Nobody will see me. I didn't, I didn't get my suit out of the cleaner. My shoes are not shine. My car won't crank. Everything that he can do to pull you away from worshiping the Lord and giving him the glory, that's what he'll do. And we need to be determined. You know, we need to be purposeful about our worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to obey you, Lord, because that's the only uh, defense that I have. My obedience to the Word of God as He has revealed it to us in the Word. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, uh, principalities or powers, all things were created by Him. They were created by Jesus. Mm -hmm. All things. Amen. And I want to tell you something else. They were not only created by Jesus, but they were created for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. My life is to be to the glory of God. Amen. Lord, if you can't get glory out of my life, then take it. I want my life to be on display for the glory and honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever my personal sacrifice may be, whatever it costs me, Lord, I want to worship you and I want to live my life for your glory because you created me to give you glory. Yeah. Paul says, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do. Now that's, those are small, trivial things, right? 
I have been eating and drinking for 61 years. Plus. <laughs> yeah, for 61 years plus I have been eating and drinking. Amen. And he says, whether you do those common, ordinary things that you do in life, Amen. do it for the glory of God. For the glory of God. Amen. Boy, that puts me in a whole new realm, does it? Doesn't it? Yes. If I'm a father, I'm supposed to be a father for the glory of God. Yes. If I'm a husband, I'm supposed to be a husband for the glory of God. Yes. I want God to be magnified and glorified in everything that I do because Jesus Christ created me to give him glory. Yes. Now you ought to give him a word of praise on that one. Yes. Amen. That's why he created me. To give him glory. Get the glory out of it, Lord. Amen. Don't let self jump up in the way here. God, you get the glory out of whatever happens in my life. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's what it says. You've created for him. Yes. Then I want you to notice verse 17 here. He is before all things. And by him, all things consist. That's a neat word in the original here. Uh, histeme means that they stand together. Yes. Every proton and neutron and every uh, atom. Okay? And the circle that God has created to hold things together is held in its socket by Jesus. Were it not for Jesus, these benches would fall apart. Yes, sir. Yes. Were it not for Jesus, your car would self-destruct. Mm -hmm. All things stand together, stand in their place, held there by an, an omnipotent God. Amen. Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Yes, sir. See, that's why life is so important. Life is important. Yes. I just, I was thinking the other day, and I don't know if I was driving or not, but I was, I was thinking when my wife was pregnant. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. <laughs> you know, husband and wife are supposed to sleep together, right? Mm -hmm. And when she was pregnant, every now and then I'd feel a little kick in my side. <laughs> there was life in there. <laughs> You know what I mean? And, and a life kind of moves around. Uh, if I felt the kick, I wonder what was she feeling? <laughs> and, and then I went to, to Lutheran Hospital and I, I, I looked down and the doctor said, Reverend, you put on your gown, you can come in and uh, you, you can see this little son. And I walked in there and here was this little bright-eyed kid with his finger, with his hand in his mouth. Perfect kid, hair on his face, toenails, <laughs> fingers, eyes that are just glittering as if to say, boy, I'm glad to be out here and look around. <laughs> I'm saying, man, what a, what a precious sight this is. And no man can explain that, uh, Deacon. No, no man can explain what happens in the birth of a child. And you just stand back in awe and say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. All of it held together by Jesus Christ. That's what it says. Now this one, and I won't take long on this one, but this one here may come home a little closer. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. But I want you to notice verse 18. And this one can take us into weeks dealing with but God tells us what is, what it means to be the head. Kiseli. And one man has written a book in which uh, uh, Dr. Uh, 
Grudem, uh, Biblical Femininity and Biblical Truth, in which he did a research on this word head. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, the husband is the what? Head of the wife. What does that mean? I was reading Dr. John Piper, you know, in his little book, uh, as he tries to explain what does it mean to be the head? What does it mean and what does it mean? Here Christ is said to be the head of the church. And uh, Dr. Grudem in his huge book, which I'd recommend to anybody, it's a readable book. If I read it, it's readable. Believe me, it is. And he studied uh, 52 times in which that word was used in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, and in secular uh, Greek society, uh, talking about what it means to be the head. But here Jesus is said to be the head of the church. What does that mean? Well, uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. We'll come back here next week, okay? <laughs> bring your friend. <laughs> Sister, bring your husband. Amen. Husband, bring your wife. Amen. Because there are situations where wives have to be head. Amen. Husband is dead. Amen. Or maybe he walked away. And she's got to play that role as a female in her home and in her family. She's got children. What is she going to do? Just lay over and die? Roll over, die, and die? No. No, she has to do that in many instances. But she does it under the authority of the Word of God. And whenever there is a husband there, she kind of defers to him because Jesus Christ is the head. He is in charge. And by the grace of God, do everything within your power to try to help support the man whom God has placed there to be the leader. But this is a very interesting study. Jesus said he's the head. And John Piper points out that uh, if you're going to be the head, uh, number one, you've got to be a servant leader. Amen. Jesus is the head, and he is a servant leader. He doesn't do things just to satisfy himself, just to get his own way, just to do things to promote himself. If he is a servant leader, he serves his wife, he serves his children, and he serves his family. And, and you see a good picture here in Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> but in addition to just being a servant leader, he must be a provider. And young sister, you're thinking about marrying the guy? You ought to ask him, number one, do you have a job? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a job? If you don't have a job, how do you plan to get a job? <laughs> Maybe I can help you get a job, but you got to have a job. If you want to be my head, you got to be able to provide for me. <laughs> but now we're living in a day where the sisters. <laughs> Okay, so we're living in a day where, where the sisters say, you come on and marry me and I'll provide for you. And our society is in all kind of trouble today because of that philosophy. Children grow up not knowing who is mom or dad. We've got a Mr. Mom and Mrs. Daddy. <laughs> and then times where they cross over, you know, I don't know whether I'm mom or daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to get out of here before I get shot. <laughs> but Jesus is the head. And how was he the head? He was the servant leader. He went to Calvary and he provided salvation for his church. Jesus did it. And he provides for his church. I want to thank you for listening to this program. I invite you to come and worship with us. You may join us for prayer and Bible study each week. Working,